Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. I got a new haircut and I'm wearing my brand new t-shirt from the Sandlot of Ham Porter. It's in red and it says, you're killing me Smalls. <laughs> yeah, just like the other shirt I had uh, two years ago. <laughs> uh, I just got this at Burlington recently along with all the other shirts that I got from Old Navy and JCPenney. But this was very nice. Definitely shows another look of the character as the great Bambino, yeah, played by Petra Reno. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm about to do a movie review this week since it's been a while. Just trying to keep up with the channel. And it came out last year on September 28th with a uh, modest success, so it did pretty well. And it's a bit surprising for me because this is a pretty rare horror film to come out since we were getting so many horror films over the years. Nothing wrong with that. But we've been getting some plenty of bad ones. <laughs> However, this one is quite different from many others. It's called Hellfest. Yep. And this is a horror movie, which is also a slasher, about a theme park that's dedicated to horror. So yes, I guess you could say it is similar to the movie The Fun House that was directed by Toby Hooper, yeah, the late great director. Um, but the difference is that was more of a theme attraction, whereas this one, it's a theme park. You get to see a lot of people, you know, dressing up, wearing all these uh, scary costumes, going around scaring people. And they get to go into the maze and all these other um, attractions until we begin to spot a mysterious killer that's on the loose. Yes, it got mixed reviews from critics because, as usual, the critics are always, you know, giving a lot of crap on films like this. Whereas, these are the same critics who just went on to praise the other two films that are getting a, a lot of hype. Like, the new Halloween, for instance, or even Suspiria remake. Both of which I don't care for. So, sometimes I like to try out something different for a change. And, and guess what? I tried out Mandy with Nicolas Cage. And that was a big surprise, and I love it. Same goes with Summer of 84. That was another movie that was quite different. You know, giving an 80s nostalgia vibe to it. Considering this is yet an, another movie about, you know, suspecting that your neighbor is a serial killer. So it's like rear window in a way, but, but a whole uh, different story. And this one. And I feel like this is underrated. Because um, it's, it's not getting much hype anyway, and, and I think that's sad. But I was surprised when I saw the trailer. It looks really interesting. So when I saw the movie, I feel like, yeah, this is exactly what I expect. So I just feel like nowadays, why can't we have uh, a different horror film that's, that's more original? Even if it's similar. So that, that's what I felt. So anyway, uh, the movie stars um, Amy Forstyfe, Rain Edwards, Bex Taylor Claus uh, from the TV show The Killing that's on AMC. And I think she later went on to do shows like uh, Arrow and House of Lies. Uh, Christian James, uh, Matt Mercurio. Roby Attell, Tony Todd, yes, Tony Todd from Candyman, Final Destination movies, and even um, the movie The Crow. Uh, Michael Turek, Courtney Dice, Ellie Graham, and Stephen Convoy. It's written by Seth M. Sherwood, along with Blair Butler, 
Nakila Cooper, that's based on a story by William Pednick, Christopher Sy, and out of all people, Steven Susco, who just previously directed and wrote the movie Unfriended Dark Web, which was a horrible movie, if you ask me. <laughs> But I'll guarantee you, this is a way better film than Unfriended Dark Web. And it's directed by Gregory Popkin. The movie begins where we meet a young girl named Natalie, who's played by Amy Forsyth, who just went back to her former apartment with her best friend Brooke, played by Rain Edwards, who still lives there. But she greets her old friend, but being disappointed to learn that a former classmate who's a quirky character named Taylor, played by Bex Taylor Claus, who Natalie doesn't get along with, but is living with her. Um, their plan was to actually go to a theme park called Hellfest, which is dedicated to horror and travels across the country during the Halloween season. So it's kind of like all these Halloween horror nights that you see at Universal Studios Hollywood or or those Halloween scare fests at Knott's Berry Farm <laughs> or hell even the Six Flags Magic Mountain that actually has those Halloween fests too <laughs> they're about to go they have their VIP passes and decided to uh, join in with um, Brooke's boyfriend, Quinn, who's played by Christian James. Taylor's boyfriend, Asher, played by Matt Mercurio. And their respective friend, Gavin, who's played by Welby Attell, who's actually attracted to Natalie. So once they arrive at Hellfest, they got all their VIP wristbands, so they get to skip the lines and be able to have the best time of their lives, you know, getting scared. Yeah, good clean fun here. <laughs> yeah, and they also get to drink. Uh, they get to go all to these scary mazes, uh, go around to all these rides, and even play all these games, so that way you'll be able to win a prize. You know, that sort of thing. But that is until we meet a mysterious figure who turns out to be a serial killer named The Utter, who's played by Stephen Conroy, who... At the beginning of the movie, he was responsible for the death of a young girl from Cincinnati who he stabs, you know, being separated from her group of friends. Yeah, in fact, she was about to become more <laughs> sarcastic, so she thought that, yeah, he was going to scare him off, but otherwise he was just going to, you know, stalk her. He actually did stab her completely. It was taken straight to the chamber. So anyway, um, well they begin to notice that um, the other was actually stalking the group, you know, hoping they were going to scare them off, you know, just like all the rest of the, you know, a group of actors all dressed up uh, in scary costumes, because that's what they do nowadays in those, those Halloween uh, horror fest. <laughs> but Hellfest definitely brings it up for it. Um, well, suddenly, um, when they went into that maze, that's when Natalie suddenly spots uh, the Utter, who was about to uh, go after the a young girl who was by the name of Brittany. Uh, now, at first, she thought, okay, this was just part of the act. You know, maybe... The other is going to depend on either scaring Natalie or try to stab the victim, hoping this is part of it. But it turns out that it was real. And she was a bit surprised or, and shocked. But otherwise, well, she didn't believe it at first, but then that's when she begins to discover that the other has been stalking them all this time. So that's where it leads to those uh, death scenes that we're going to get to. When Gavin was about to play um, the game called uh, The Deadlands, you know, just to win a prize, 
really did suck at the game. So what he did was, um, since he couldn't uh, come back to to play the game again, because you know he's shit out of luck, he wanted to pay for the prize that he wanted to give, so he'll be able to give it to Natalie, but they couldn't let him. So then he actually discovered that there's actually a locker room inside where they hidden all the prizes. And just when he was about to do that, uh, suddenly the other uh, stalks him and he was ready to get this, grab the mallet and smash his head right open. And boy, was that really amazingly extensive gore right there that I saw. And it doesn't look, um, so there's probably a mix of CGI in there, but it's also a bit practical that I could see. But that was really amazing. I haven't seen a, a gore like this in a while. Having to, having to smash the head of Gavin and, and explodes. So then Natalie wants to have been a ride He's beginning to find out uh, on her cell phone because she receives a text from Gavin that he was going to come back but he never returned. That yes, um, the other did took his phone and he's ready to text uh, Natalie. Um, so he was trying to tell um, her friends that um, he was trying to find out where Gavin is and hoping he'll come back so Natalie will probably wait for him but then Natalie decided to go on the ride anyway um, but then the the ride got stuck and then she was ready to be attacked by the other and then she discovered that well there was so many others around <laughs> that it gets confusing but luckily uh, she didn't get stabbed so what a surprise. Having them get separated, um, Asher and Quinn uh, once up in the maze where the other suddenly found uh, Asher and stabbed them in the eye. Oh my god. It's always hard to see movies where someone gets stabbed in the eye or then blood starts to come straight into the eye like they're crying blood uh, that that really got to me <laughs> but it was oh my god that was impressive but messed up at the same time feeling very suspicious after the disappearance of Gavin and Asher she begins to go with Brooke to the Romans Western just so they can contact the police and the security to find out what's going on because uh, later she winds up inside the bathroom stall. She's trying to receive a text from Gavin to see where he's at, but then she begins to hear a ringtone. Also, um, she began to notice that, yes, there was a photo that was taken inside the, the photo booth, which um, the killer actually had taken. So it, it turns out, yes, the killer was was stalking Natalie, ready to attack her and through the bathroom stalls. So he tries to go to another stall to distract him. Yeah, she actually locks uh, the door and was ready to escape before she was ready to contact uh, the police and the security to find out um, where the killer is but the security refuses he thinks this is just one of the other actors that's playing uh, the other or any other <laughs> yeah I'm repeating myself here um, so yeah he he couldn't believe uh, Natalie's story not his book so then that's when um, Taylor suddenly wants up into a theme attraction where we actually meet the Barker, who's played by Tony Todd. And by the way, he was the one who actually um, 
is the announcer for the, the Hellfest ride. Yeah, this is where he does his voice. Welcome to Hellfest! <laughs> so he was there, and, and this was uh, the head decapitated scene, where well, Taylor was chosen to have her head decapitated. Which then we begin to find out that, yes, the executioner who was ready to... Uh, decapitate uh, Taylor's head actually turned out to be the killer as uh, Natalie spotted but it was just part of the act at first but then well this is where the other plans to actually really decapitate Taylor and so the other traps her and I'm ready to uh, start. I'm uh, ready to start the. Um, I'm ready to start uh, the blade of the gullotine. And it was going to drop all the way straight into her head, which only gave her a wound on the back, back of the neck. And then she she's about to escape, and ran for her life before she got stabbed along with Quinn. And that's what leads to a chase scene between Natalie and Brooke, where they went all the way into all these uh, mazes. Or this way, they were trying to find the exit to get out of the, the theme park, but they wound up in yet another maze, which is called Welcome to Hell. And yes, it leads to the final battle showdown between uh, Natalie, Brooke, and the other. I won't give away the twist and turn, but either way, it's it's best. So for those who haven't seen the movie, uh, but I thought, in my opinion, I really enjoyed it. I think it's very rare to actually have a horror movie that's set in a theme park, and and this does feel original to me, even if even if it is cliche or any other. And yes, there are cliches in the movie, but. But it didn't bother me much. I mean, I understand this whole, yeah, we don't believe in, in her story or, or any of this crap that they put into it. But at the next moment, um, it definitely pulled me in. I mean, it's definitely what I expected to see from the movies where you see, you know, a group of friends having the best time of their lives, you know, going through a lot of those mazes, which are actually well made, well done. It does make you feel like you're actually in a theme park, and I love that. I mean, like if you had to go to Universal Studios Hollywood, Knott's Berry Farm, or Six Flags Magic Mountain to have the experience, um, but never as an actual theme park, so, and so it's really cool. And it had all the rides that they, they had to choose. I think this would have been really cool if they actually had went into those other roller coaster rides. Um, that would have been quite different too. Like, or even the Ferris wheel for that matter. But yeah, um, I love that. And, and having a mysterious killer on the loose was something tempting. I mean, yes, we have seen a lot of mass killers in movies. Um, aside from Michael Myers and and Jason Voorhees and everything. I mean, it's good to see we got a, another character that's also um, mysterious. He doesn't speak except for yeah, doing that humming tune, like he does la 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 la, or something like that. He does do his um, quiet gestures, like shh, or, or he does his humming, but he doesn't speak much so that's pretty interesting and it has a lot of gore as I mentioned already uh, it's very extensive uh, very uh, <laughs> very uh, shocking disturbing and but well done the twist was a bit surprising for me but again don't want to give that away on um, the characters um, they weren't that bad at all. Um, aside from the fact, um, yes, I mean, Gavin did 
Should have never had went to the locker room in the first place. I can understand that. But he is trying to, you know, trying to give a a gift to Natalie, so that way, you know, he pretend like he won, or you know, just so he, they could feel better since everyone already has their gifts, but not Natalie. So he's trying to help her out, and I love Tony Todd too, playing the role as the Barker, and he's also the best part of the movie, and when he's there. Um, I also thought uh, Bex Taylor Claus was very good too, and it's great to see that we got a quirky character that's just having all the fun. Like she's, you know, she's not annoying. She's actually uh, very fun to hang out with. I mean, that's what I love to have in movies these days: is having quirky characters, just having fun. You know, being more uh, quotable and and funny and and just brings in a lot of laughs here <laughs> along with the rest of other group of friends you know just having the best time of their lives that sort of thing you kinda of feel bad for them because you know they're, they're getting killed yeah but you know this is gonna happen in slasher movies um, so this is well done they, they shot this in Atlanta Georgia it's the perfect location for that this is, of course, the directorial debut of Gregory uh, Plotkin, because for those who don't know, he actually worked on the editing for Get Out. Yes, this is definitely the future for him, because he did a tremendous job uh, with the editing skills of that movie. So it leaves a lot of chills. Um, you also got producer Gail Ann Hurd. Yeah, from the Terminator, and yeah, who's known for producing the Terminator, uh, T2, Aliens, and all the rest. Uh, it's good to see that she produced this film with uh, Tucker Tooley under her new production company. So that's a good note. Bear McCreary uh, did the score for the film. It, it gives it a an interesting chill. Uh, cinematography was impressive and also uh, again Gregory Proclin did a great job with the editing uh, with uh, David Agon to join in so there you go it may not be perfect but otherwise I don't care because you know I just want to have fun being scared again um, there is a mix of jump scares in the movie, but it's not too intimidating, so keep that in mind. But if it's if it's the jump scares that you're dealing with, it's mostly the scenes, uh, you know, with the the actors scaring them off, you know, during those mazes. And you, you, you can also see all these impressive uh, effects that they use in all the costumes, the makeup designs that they put into it, and the way the, the building looks, and how it feels and you also get to see all these other you know creatures around you know coming by that was just wow <laughs> but definitely give this movie a chance I mean if you love uh, theme parks and and all these uh, horror uh, theme attractions that you like to go on especially during Halloween I mean this would definitely be the perfect movie to watch on Halloween too and also if you love slashers and other horror films and this is for you but always for those who don't care well that's up to you <laughs> that's Hellfest and I give the movie four stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye